The video game crash in 1983 to 1985 was the worst years in video game history. There was a drop in sales of video games. Big companies were starting to pull out of the video game industry. Atari used to be the world leader in video games, but now the Famicom, short for family computer, wanted to take a stab at the Western market and see if they can generate sales in the United States, since the Famicom did so well in Japan. On January of 1985, Famicom introduced a new system at the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas, one of the largest trade shows in the world. Famicom got renamed to an American version name called the Advanced Video System, AVS for short. Unfortunately, Nintendo didn't get a single order. So this begs the question, why? Why did the Advanced Video System do so well in Japan, but got zero attention in the US trade show? While well, the system wasn't bad or anything, it's just the consumers and investors were still shaken up about the recent events that caught everyone off guard in 1983. Meanwhile, to go off track for a little bit, the computer business started to boom during the video game crash in 1983. In 1982, a computer called the Commodore 64 would cost as little as $200. Adjust to inflation, it would cost $566 in today's market. The Commodore 64 was a lot cheaper than other consoles like the Atari 5200, and it had more features. So technically, the PC gaming versus console gaming debate started about 40 years ago. Hiroshi Yamauchi, the president of Nintendo at the time, saw how well the Commodore 64 was doing in the United States, and was still perplexed on how the AVS didn't do so well in Las Vegas trade show. The Famicom was selling like crazy in Japan, he needed the American sales team to keep trying. The American sales team is led by Minoru Arakawa, who happened to be Yamauchi's son-in-law. A lot of pressure was on Arakawa. He was a member of the family he needed to succeed. One major problem that the AVS had to deal with was against the retailers. They had a lot of video game overstock and consoles that were sitting on the shelves in the back room, not getting sold. So what was the solution? How was Nintendo going to be able to get their consoles into retail stores without getting turned away? Actually, the solution was simple. Arakawa wanted to make the AVS not seem like a video game console. This involved changing the name from AVS, Advanced Video System, to the NES, Nintendo Entertainment System. He added shooting games like Duck Hunt, Wild Gunman, since gun games sold well in toy stores throughout America at the time. After that, his greatest decoy game design was Rob the Robot. Rob stand for Robot Operating Buddy, and his main job was to interact with a couple of games like Gyromite and Stack Up on the NES. Why was Rob just a decoy? Because he offered very little gameplay, and his main design was just to show that the Famicom was not just a video game. In the summer of 1985, Arakawa rented a booth at the Summer Consumer Electronics Show and set the Rob out in front where everyone can see it. So, how did the event go? It ended up not going so well. Arakawa didn't get a single order after all the different changes and redesigns that he and his team had to go through, dusting from retailers or consumers. But Arakawa didn't give up. He had to try a different method. He decided to set up a focus group the focus group consists of kids playing NES games. Arakawa watched from behind a two-way mirror, but all he heard was how much the kids disliked the NES. One kid even said this, and I quote, This is shit. After experiencing that focus group, Arakawa was about ready to throw in the towel. But he decided to call his father-in-law, Yamauchi, and explain the situation to him. Yamauchi had one last idea. He told Arakawa to test it one more time, this time focus selling it in New York City. There are about 15 million people living in New York City at the time, and over 500 retailers that Arakawa could focus making sales pitches. Delivered the game system, stocked store shelves, and set up Nintendo's in-store displays themselves. Arakawa promised the retailers they would buy back any game systems that didn't sell and Arakawa never referred to their video game as a video game. The NES was just an entertainment system. 
With the buyback guaranteed, retailers had nothing to lose, so hundreds of retailers in New York City decided to stock Nintendo systems, even though they were certain that it wouldn't sell. Well, they were wrong. More than 50,000 games sold by Christmas in 1985. This caused retail stores wanting to have NES systems stay in their stores after the holidays. This created a domino effect. Now more cities are stocking NES systems. LA, Chicago, San Francisco. The NES sold well in every city. In 1986, Nintendo sold 1.8 million systems, 5.4 million in 1987, and 9.3 million in 1988. Nintendo kept dominating in the mid and late 80s, but that's where Nintendo hit its first blunder. In 1989, a new game system came out to rival against Nintendo, called the Sega Genesis. Nintendo ignored it, even though the Genesis was twice as powerful as the NES. Genesis introduced its mascot, a giant blue hedgehog that was an edgy, anti-Mario character who appealed more to an older audience. The Sega Genesis caught a lot of people's eyes, and then they started to buy the Genesis system. By 1991, Nintendo released a Super Nintendo, but it was too late. Sega already was able to step a foot in the market and started to outsell Nintendo. If Nintendo would have released a Super Nintendo two years earlier, then Sega wouldn't have existed like how it is today. But still, the Super Nintendo still sell pretty well. It has an awesome library of games such as Super Mario World, Super Metroid, and Super Castlevania 4, just to name a few, and continued producing games on the console till 2003. So even though Nintendo survived the video game crash in 1983 to 1985, they still had a bunch of blunders and mistakes that they made along the way. But despite all the mistakes they made and miscalculations, Nintendo was able to overcome these challenges and continue doing well in the video game industry. Thanks for watching.